Hello everyone. Welcome to Versatile Studio Maths. My name is Rishi Majumdar and I'll be taking your course of computer organization and architecture. Before starting the lecture, I'd like to tell that that I am be teaching computer organization and architecture from the book Computer System Architecture that is written by M. Morris Mano. You guys can follow this book. I'll be teaching, for, or you can search for another book for architecture. And here I have made a PDF. Here I have jotted down the most important points from the book and I will be teaching from this PDF and I will also upload the PDF and the book PDF in the description down below. So introduction to this class is introduction. What is our name of the subject is computer organization and architecture. So what is organization and what is architecture? See, computer organization. Computer organization is concerned with the way hardware components operate and the way they are connected to form a computer system. You should know that in a computer there are many hardware parts that is keyboard, mouse, there is CPU, printer, etc. There are many hardwares. So they are connected so that it, the computer operates smoothly and properly so that is computer organization computer architecture computer architecture is concerned with the structure and behavior of the computer as seen by the user it includes information formats the instruction set and techniques for addressing memory this is important in information formats instruction set and techniques for address so there is something you should know that in computer organization we learn how to do and in computer architecture what to do that means see that instruction formats instruction set what are this instruction it means you give some command to the computer and it that are instructions say you are doing in a calculator that is 2 plus 5 the answer is 7 how does the computer calculate we are giving instructions that we are adding 2 plus 5 and we have to also give the instruction that we are adding this is computer architecture and organization so next digital computer and bits you should know that computer only understands 0 and 1 it does not understand anything beside that we write in our language but it is later translated into machine level language such as computer understanding M machine level language is nothing but strings of zeros and ones such as triple one triple one means it is seven so this is how computer understands the digital computer is a digital system that performs computational tasks the digital computer uses binary number system which has two digits zero and one a binary digit is called a bit. Information is represented in digital computers using group of bits. That I pre just now said only that it is in a group of bits. That is, it strings of zeros and one. I showed you that is triple one. So it is a group of bits or group of zeros or ones. Next, basis of architecture. A computer system is sometimes subdivided into two functional entities, hardware and software. Just now, in the definition of organization and architecture, tell that organization is about the way hardware components operate. That it means it works on hardware, and architecture works on the software. That is instruction. What instruction you are given to a software, or what result you are taking from the software. 
both work simultaneously so, so that the computer works perfectly and you get the desired result the hardware of a computer consists of all in electronic components electromechanical devices that comprises the physical entity of a device that is hardware of a computer that is the board mouse etc whereas computer software consists of instruction and data that the computer manipulate to perform various data processing tasks the sequence of instruction is called a program the data that manipulated by program consists of database you should have the heard term program everything that happens in a computer is done by a program so what is program it is nothing but collection of instruction there are many instructions and it forms a program and which does some specific task such as there is a program where it runs movies it means it does a certain sequence of instruction you are choosing a movie so the computer gets instruction and with the help of the instructions they run a program and you can see the movies the data that manipulated by the program constitute the database database is nothing but the, such as storage of the memory where the data is stored and the program program collects the data from the memory and thus the task such as the movie it where it is stored it is stored in your computer memory so it retrieves the movie from the memory yes this is a very important part plot diagram in your college or any exam i think you will need this importantly memorize it properly so this is a block diagram of a digital computer so what happens inside a computer think you should have heard the term cpu central processing unit everything happens in the cpu addition subtraction etc many tasks are done inside the cpu for example you are given an instruction to the cpu that you want to retrieve some data so the cpu sends a command to the random access memory ram or you can say memory so the me memory gives the data back to the cpu let's forget about the movie let's think you want to print something print some document so the cpu takes the document from the ram and now you want to print so the cpu sends it to the input output processor input output processor is a processor that controls the input output devices you want to print the document so that means you need the help of output devices so the iop that is input output processor sends it to output devices such as your printer so you get the hard copy of the document and now you and another example is that such as you need some hard copy that if you have written a homework and you want to give it submit it in college so using input devices such as scanner or camera you take the document in the input out processor from there you send it to cpu and you have now you have you have to store it in your memory in your phone or computer so the cpu is sending it to the ram to store it and uh, you can again retrieve it if you want this is the process happens in computer so we have heard that term memory multiple times till now so what is memory or ram random access memory you should remember this random access memory think you have already heard the term ram so what is ram ram is the internal memory of the cpu for storing data program program result so that it means it is memory it stores the data that is you are giving such as you are storing some documents etc or you are running a program where you are doing addition subtraction and you are storing the result it is done inside the ram it is read write memory which stores data until the machine is working 
as it is volatile so ram is a volatile memory that it means it forgets things for example suddenly you are you are using a pc and your current connection goes out the computer will switch off and after that current returns and you switch on the memory store inside the ram is deleted so it is a volatile memory but it has its own advantage that is read or write it means if i written something wrong and you have to wish to change it you can do it in ram ram is small both in terms of physical size and amount of data it holds so there are two types of ram static ram and dynamic ram here we will learn about the difference between static and dynamic ram so first point static ram this kind of ram retains the speed information as long as the power supply is on so it means that you are storing all the data until you have switched off the computer but in dynamic ram the memory is erased even though the power supply is on but it does not mean that you are doing some important things and suddenly your data is deleted that's not that doesn't mean that it means that it can remove the data while the power supply is on but this ra static ram retains the memory till your power supply is off second point static ram circuit consists of multiple transistors and the cross connected inverted latch this is something that you will read in digital electronics so i'll not be explaining much about it same here dynamic ram circuit consists of lesser number generally one transistor and capacitor retaining of information depends on power supply this is at the first point only that until you have the power supply the memory is stored but in this point depends on how long can the capacitor retain charge fourth point less path density dynamic ram high path density the so less path density means that in static ram it consists of transistors and inverters so there are limited number of in transistors and inverted latch but in dynamic ram it consists of transistor and capacitors Tran capacitors are has like cells so they are high pad density of capacitors in dynamic ram high power consumption but dynamic ram has low power consumption static ram is faster dynamic ram moderate speed but slower than static ram point 6 don't re need refreshing of the circuit that means until the power supply is off the circuit doesn't need the refreshing but since dynamic ram loses its memory even though the power supply is on it needs refreshing of the circuit so that it loses the memory so now there is another part of the memory which you have i think you have already heard it stands for read only memory unlike the ram here you cannot read and write here on you can only read so i think you should have the question why we use rom but not ram because it has read and write both option this is the reason this type of memory is non volatile non volatile means even if you have if your power supply is off you can retain the memory data or everything in your memory this information is stored permanently in such memory during manufacture a rom stores such inf instruction that are required to start a computer what is operating system operating system is nothing but sets of instruction or programs so those parts are saved in your rom so when you are switching on your computer your rom is activated and those program that is your operating system is initialized and rom differentiated into three parts e rom e prom e e prom prom full form is programmable read only memory full form of e prom is erasable programmable read only memory e prom is electrically erasable programmable read only memory 
these are the definitions of prom e prom e prom so now what is the difference between rom and p rom rom is non programmable but prom is programmable that is programmable rom read only memory in here rom rom is not flexible that is because data cannot be changed but in pre prom it is flexible that means you can program it and change it next point is important rom is slower than p rom but there is a difference in price so so you can you can only use rom even though it is slower than p rom p rom is used in mainly research and development purposes and their price is very high the write in of self content mainly done by machine testing process and technique to learn later p rom writing mainly done electrically so for rom you use a technical mastering technique but for p rom we mainly write electrically that is from programming or etc difference between e prom e e prom e prom erasable programmable memory this is a the full form of e prom e e prom is electrically erasable programmable rom so now how it both are erasable erasable but how can it be erased for e prom you use uv light for erasing the memory stored in e e prom but for e e prom we use electrically that means we program we use the with the help of the program we erase the memory of e e prom to erase the erase and reprogram a chip must be physically removed that means we have first have to remove the e prom and use uv light to erase the data but for e e prom we do not need to remove the remove the chip from the circuit we use programs and erase the data from the e e prom an entire chip content have to be erased out at a time that means you have to clear the full memory not a single bit of data will be left but e prom you can erase particular things that you want to erase that means there are hundreds of things but you want to only erase one program so e prom is does that selectively differences are very important difference between rom and ram sorry this should be ram rom read only memory ram random access this full form rom is non volatile but ram is volatile that it means it loses memory as long as the power supply is there use for permanent storage of information for temporary storage i've already told that it stores the memory permanently that is your operating system and important programs that are necessary for running a computer but ram is used mainly for temporary storage that is your documents such things are stored in ram rom is cheaper when produced in large volumes but ram is costlier it is costlier because it is volatile we can e read write both at the same time but in rom we can only read stored information can li only read at the time of operation can be read when needed it means uh, we can only read the information at the time of operation such as i've given the example previously when you are switching on your computer the operating system in is, is initialize that means we are reading the memory stored in about the operating system stored in the rom at the time of operation but if you need some documents whenever you need you can go to the file you have placed in and read it this is the difference between ram and rom so next difference between real memory and virtual memory
real memory is the real or physical in existence that is ram or rom that is the real memory but there is a concept of virtual memory virtual memory is conceptual it it is a type of illusion to the users that it has a, a huge memory that is virtual in real memory there is a limitation in size but in virtual memory no such size limitation is present generally the memory constitutes the real memory generally the memory constitutes the real memory it means that the memory is pres present mainly in the real memory only in virtual memory it is assumed to be constituted by the auxiliary memory cache memory and mem main memory auxiliary memory cache and me these are the types of memory you will learn it in next few lectures but for now you just should learn that these are types of memory with the help of auxiliary cache and main memory we constitute the virtual memory in real memory it, since it is real it, the speed is faster but in virtual memory speed is slower the real memory the storage capacity is limited but for virtual memory thus uh, there is unlimited storage capacity that is it depends on hard disk so that's it for today's lecture if you like this video please share and give a like and you should also subscribe the versatile studio maths and if you have any suggestion please just in the comments below thank you everyone